Hey, welcome to Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, and on the show with me today is Lawrence Maroney. Thanks for having me here, Doug. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, so tell me, what do you do with the Firebase team? So I'm a developer advocate on the Firebase team, so I focus on helping developers understand the Firebase technologies and helping us understand what developers are doing with it. So which teams do you work with in particular? So the technologies in Firebase, uh, yeah. so yeah, we've got like 15 of them. Uh, so there's a number of them that I work with from like Firebase Cloud Messaging and Firebase Notifications, App Indexing, some Dynamic Links, some Remote Config, and, uh, and of course Firebase Auth. So you're in a new video series right now called Pirate Metrics. Do you do any swashbuckling in that? I really wish I had an opportunity to do some swashbuckling, but unfortunately budget meant that I just got a plastic parrot and an eye patch. Mm, it's too bad. <laughs> <All right. Wow. laughs> if you want to watch that video, you can click the link in the description below. You also have another new video coming out, a geocast that you're working on with the Maps team, right? Yeah, so as, as well as like uh, advocacy for Firebase, um, I'm, re I'm a real geek for Google Maps and uh, love Google Maps and love all the technologies around that. So it's, it's been a real privilege to work with some of them and I'm doing a, a couple of videos on one of my favorite parts of it, which is called the Places API. And the Places API really, it helps you to understand your place in the real world. And we've like 100 million points of interest in the database and you can detect it, you're against them and that kind of stuff. So we've got a fun couple of videos based around a places-based game that I wrote where I'm going to be hosting the video and I'm going to actually be doing it with a virtual cartoon character beside me who's one of the characters in the game itself. So. Wow, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. So uh, I think that one, that one will be available also in the description below. So this will be the first time we'll see a Googler co-host a video yeah. with an animated yeah, character. Yeah, so a barely human alongside a simulated human. Hmm. <laughs> so you're doing something else with location-based services. Yeah. You have a robot that determines your location. What's that? I do, yes. Yeah. So that's this little guy here. I brought him along on the show because cool. he would have been jealous if I got to come on the show and he didn't. We have a conference called Google Cloud Next. And at this conference, I'm doing a talk on geolocation. Now, geolocation, if you have a GPS, is very, very easy. Uh, because you know GPS satellites will detect you, but there's a couple of things that number one it doesn't always work indoors, mm -hmm. and number two it's uh, expensive in terms of both battery and circuits. So there's a great need of enterprises to have cheap devices that they can use to geolocate, like for example, if you've got a fleet of trucks or something along those lines. And um, so we have an API called the Geolocation API. And what that does is that if you sniff like the Wi-Fi signals around you or the cell tower signals around you, and you get their BSS IDs, they're called, along with the signal strength, and you pass that up to Google, what Google will do is by triangulating you from these based on the signal strength, it will then pass you back an estimate for where you are in the world at this moment. Hmm. And with, you know, with a, like a, an accuracy radius around that. So for my talk, in order to have a gratuitous demo showing this, I built this little guy, this little robot, and he has a, like a Python program on him that what it does is that when I'm going to send him running around the conference hall, he's like, he's, he's like an autonomous little driver thing oh. that he'll go around the conference hall like these little, these are little ultrasound sensors rather than eyes and so they will hopefully stop him bumping into people's feet and uh, then he will be sniffing the the Wi-Fi signals um, there's no cell on this one so it'll be just Wi-Fi and then getting the location back and then those latitudes and longitudes will plot on a map so okay I call him Rudy Rudy all right yeah. does Rudy move can he can yeah. he uh, make a little uh, trek on my desk here yeah Rudy moves so um, I have him he's got like a little random program that will get him moving, so I've just launched it. It takes a little while for him to warm up. So right. you're gonna have to catch him if he falls off your desk. Oh, we have a, a barrier over here. <laughs> I'm eagerly waiting. <laughs> Drum roll. Go, Rudy, go. So it, there's, a, <laughs> there's a little program in there that I'm kind of up, there he oh, goes. Okay, so. I've scaled it down so that it, like he will do the kind of movements that he would do on a desk instead of a conference room. So uh, he's only moving a few inches instead of moving a few feet. He's making a oh, he's around. making a run for the. He's making desk. a beeline for the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so like no, what would, what he's actually doing is as he moves around like this, like he's only moving oh, two or three oh. inches. <laughs> but like when it's when I'm doing it in the room, he'll be moving about twenty feet, and then he'll stop and he'll take a reading of where he's at. And then uh, <laughs> it's, it's precariously close to falling these, off. These are ultrasound as well, so hopefully he's detecting that he's going to fall off the uh, cliff. And so like, he'd move like instead of two inches, he'd move about twenty feet, and then take a scan, and then like store the information in oh. Firebase. All right, let's you know, let's put him back in the box. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, he likes the yeah, coffee. Yeah, I think yeah. He's thirsty. 
This so one's good. I'll turn them off the best way I can. That's the Yankta battery. Yeah. <laughs> Back to bed. So you have a show kind of like this one called Coffee with a Googler. Is that yeah, right? Coffee with a Googler is a show where um, I just get to have a whole lot of fun going around and meeting. Oh, product placement. Sorry about that. <laughs> meeting various Googlers and talking about what they do. So a little bit like this, like you're focused on Firebase, but I, it, so I really like to meet just all kinds of people from Google and all kinds of interesting projects. And, you know, we've met with people who are responsible for the, like the Android Auto and cars, for a lot of artificial intelligence. And it's, it gives me the opportunity, being purely selfish, to go out there and meet a lot of great people and drink a lot of great coffee. Yeah. Would you care to meet a great monkey? We have Nate. He wants to be on your show as well. He's welcome anytime. Okay, we'll arrange that. Absolutely. I'll have his people talk to your people. His people can talk to my people. So you're all over the place with developer products at Google, it sounds yeah. like. It sounds like you're from all over the place as well. <laughs> In particular, your accent. I'm having problems placing that. So I'm curious, uh, where are you from? Well, well, I always ask people, well, guess. Guess. When, when uh -huh. say that. So. so I don't know. My, my first instinct was to say New England. Or, I'm sorry, not New England, New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was born in the Middle East. And then I grew up between Ireland and Wales. So I left Ireland then as a late teenager, did like my education in the UK, some in Wales, some in England, and then emigrated to the US in my mid 20s. And uh, so I've got that kind of crazy mixed up accent. Yeah, and another one of the things you do is writing. And I, I have this long list of things that you've written. I don't even know where to start with that. So tell <laughs> me, what, what do you do with writing? So yeah, I guess there's three different things. Number one is uh, programming books. Um, I've done lots and lots of programming books, but I, I've kind of moved away from them because Programming books are, there's a law of diminishing returns, the amount of effort versus the amount of sales. They don't sell what they used to, unfortunately. Also, I've done a bunch of sci-fi novels um, and some like uh, screenplay writing for like, I've uh, produced sci-fi TV show, which was really cool. Wow. It was a pilot of a show that didn't go beyond pilot, unfortunately. And then there's also comic book writing. So I'm, um, at the moment, I've just finished writing a, uh, for the, have you heard of the movie Equilibrium? It's like that Christian Bale. I've heard of it, yeah, yeah. So it's its 15th anniversary this year. And for the 15th anniversary, they're actually releasing a comic book prequel to the movie. And I got to write that, which is really exciting. Wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. So you have your work at Google, you have your writing, mm -hmm. and if that wasn't enough, you also volunteer with an organization called the Breakaway Program, which is for uh, professional ice hockey players. That's right. Who are retired from athletics. Yep. So what do you do with them? So what I'm doing with them is that it's really, there's, as players are leaving the professional ranks, it's, it can be a hard landing in the real world. So I'm really trying to help them have a soft landing once they get back into the real world through helping them maybe explore a career as a software engineer. So we've partnered here at Google with a company called Udacity. And Udacity have some great tutors. I was one of them. So. Mm -hmm. And they have a beginning Android class, which was designed really so that anybody, not just a computer science major or a computer geek, could learn how to program. So I figured I'd try it with two former ice hockey players, and they both thrived at this. They did a great job. So we're expanding that now to launch a program so that as players are coming out of the league that to explore learning Android development and learning software engineering as a potential career path. And with Udacity and the Nano Degree Plus, then there's the, there's the job guarantee so that if you don't find a career within six months of finishing it, they refund everything. So that makes it very low risk as well. So it's really exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to see how that works out because yeah. I'm actually a huge ice hockey fan, so. I'm recruiting you to help. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> with the Nano Degree, it's kind of interesting. That ties back into Firebase because they use Firebase Test Lab <laughs> as a way to help automatically uh, test the results of some of the homework they do. Yeah, we can't get a video with Doug Stevenson on it, not mentioning test lab. This man loves test That's lab. That's right. And there's more to come. So uh, <laughs> I'm all about the test lab. So the way that they're using test lab to uh, grade the homework is, a fair, I think, a fairly creative use of yeah, test lab. definitely. Uh, speaking of creative uses of Firebase, you have a personal project that makes use of Firebase cloud messaging. So what's yeah. that all about? So it's, I, I had these couple of smart light bulbs in my house that are programmable so you can set their color. So I built like a little Android application that can set their color, but that was boring. So I said, okay, what if I build a website and that website allows anybody in the world to pick a couple of colors and then use Firebase cloud messaging to tell the Android application hmm. to set the colors of the light bulbs. So I did that, I put it up online and I can share the URL, we'll share it in the description below if anybody wants to play with it. And it's been a lot of fun with people around the world changing it and changing my light bulbs. That sometimes I'm sitting in my home office and the lights keep changing and I'm trying to guess like where people are from based on the colors. 
Wow, wow. So that uh, sounds like you really have your hands full with a lot of different parts of Firebase. Uh, but I'd like to focus on authentication right now. So I have a little quiz to play with you. Uh-oh. It relates to authentication. I'm gonna okay. give you 15 seconds. And in that 15 seconds, I want you to name as many different mechanisms for authentication as you can. One obvious one is a password. That's the only one I know. Okay, okay well, <laughs> then the game is over. <laughs> okay, so as well as username and password, there's federated identity, right? So using like Facebook or Twitter or that kind of thing to sign in. Uh, you could have biometrics, right? Like fingerprints, like the fingerprint sensors that are on a lot of phones, there's retina scans. There's things like captures that you do associated with a password to just prove that this is a real person. And now some captures are actually smart. But they All right, time's time. up. You're using they your time telling me you. about CAPTCHA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. So let's see, we uh, we had password. You mentioned CAPTCHA, which is not really authentication. It's more of a uh, uh, proving that yeah. you're a human and not a robot. But yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely one. Uh, you mentioned a lot of biometrics, voice. Retina scan. There's, Face recognition. Yeah. Oh, I would say photo ID actually is kind of the same form, yeah. right? You just one's automated and one's printed on a card. There's also fingerprints. Yep. Uh, there's even signature, which could be a, oh, a way yeah, to, to that authenticate that a message is from someone. Yeah. Now there's also a whole classification of authentication that has to do with possession. So there's those token generators, you know, where yep. you read off a series of numbers that only appears on that one token. Yep. And there's wireless tags. USB tokens and yep. over the air password sent to you from somewhere else that, yeah. that verifies your authenticity. I guess, I guess also like nearby objects, like the way your Android Wear phone can unlock your phone. No, Android yeah. Wear Watch can unlock your phone. Exactly, like yeah. yeah. I would put that in the possession category okay. where you have something that is uh, cool. supposed to be cool. unique. I think we have a new developer advocate for Firebase Off, everybody. <laughs> I just took some time to research these ahead of time, so I get to be the expert because I spent some time doing that. All right, Lawrence, good job in the thank game. Thank you. And thank you for being on the show, and thank you for watching. And if you want to uh, see more great video content like this, be sure to click the subscribe button right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube. And we'll see you next time.